Thank you for joining us for Make More Money with Your Business blog, which is part one of the Vertical Response social media series. Before I get started, I would like to mention that we have quite a few people. Oh, sorry. OK. Um, to cover this important topic, we have brought in a blogging expert, John Jantz, who is the author of Duct Tape Marketing, who has been called the most practical small business expert because of the way he delivers straightforward, real-world marketing advice. His duct tape marketing blog was chosen as the Forbes favorite for small business and marketing and is a Harvard Business School featured marketing site. John's marketing advice can also be found on hundreds of other places online, either through articles he has written or reposted by other professionals or small businesses. Before I dive in what we're going to cover today, I would like to mention that we are going to be taking questions throughout the presentation. You all are in mute, so you will not be able to verbally say them, but please type them into the questions bar that GoTo provides, or we are also watching on Twitter. So if you use the hashtag SMSVR, you can send us questions there. All right, today, John is going to cover the basics of a business blog, design tips for your blog, and the all-important best practices of blogging tips for how to make your blog and email marketing work together. And then we are going to show you some great examples of how blogging is being done well today. With all of that being said, I'm going to turn over the controls and welcome John. Thank you. Jenna and Vertical Response, again, thanks for doing this. And those of you on the call, thanks for joining us because uh, I really applaud you. I know small business owners, a uh, busy day uh, for you to jump on and take an hour to learn and, and continue to improve yourself. Uh, I, again, I applaud you. It's something you have to do. You can't stop doing it. And I know that in many cases this whole social media, blogging, Internet stuff is – is really confusing, and, and so being able to uh, educate yourself, uh, hopefully from a source that you uh, trust, like Vertical Response and, and Duct Tape Marketing, um, I think is, is a step in the right direction. So this uh, presentation has uh, been titled Making or Make More Money with Your Small Business Blog. Uh, hopefully people did not get on here because we were, th there was uh, a thought that we were going to show them how to use advertising or affiliate sales or all the kind of various ways to jump into blogging because they thought it was a great way to get rich. From a small business perspective, it is a tremendous tool in terms of growing your business, uh, expanding your reach, uh, creating or enhancing your expertise or expert status. And because of that, um, you have the ability to make a greater revenue from your business. Now, uh, I hope that people aren't too concerned that my first image here uh, is, is not exactly a, a dollop of, of, of goodwill and good hope here, but um, I have said this before and I believe it to be absolutely true and becoming more true every day, and that is that if you're not participating in social media, and, and certainly blogging for me is the front door to social media, then you're not really online. There was a time three or four years ago when I would talk to small business audiences and I would I would say if you're if you don't have a website you're not really in business and that has fortunately uh, when when I talk to groups maybe 90 percent of the hands will go up that, that have websites uh, but that's not enough anymore and, and now what's extremely important is that you have a complete web presence and even though blogging is not necessarily the the, the hot topic of the day um, it has become or at least utilizing a blog or utilizing the principles uh, behind blogging uh, have become an extremely important part of the small business or frankly any marketers toolbox and that's really what uh, what we're going to spend time today for those of you that have a blog hopefully helping you understand ways to enhance it if, if there are those of you that have jumped on here saying I know I People keep telling me I need to have one, but I, I just haven't done it yet. Hopefully we'll get the leverage for you to, to go out and, and take that action step tomorrow. So you know what? It looks like we already have one question, if you don't mind answering it before we move on. Not um, at all. They said they completely agree with you that they believe that uh, small businesses do need to have a blog now. But the question was, should your blog be part of your small business website? Sure. That's a great question. Certainly when blogs came along, they were a bit of a novelty. They were almost like something that in, in some cases people would have them, oh, on, on one of the sites that cropped up early, like a blogger, uh, where you could just go and you could get your own uh, blog and you could set it up and, and be blogging by this afternoon. And that was a, an approach that a lot of people took. But they've become such an important and integral part of the entire content 
uh, piece that, that my suggestion is that you do one of two things. One, um, number one is that you, you have, say, WordPress uh, as, a, as a blogging tool that is my blogging tool of choice, that you have that actually on your domain. So if you already have a website, I'll use my uh, uh, as an example, ducttapemarketing.com existed uh, long before blogs uh, were, were something that people even knew about. So I added that as a, as a separate or, but, but very important um, segment or component of my existing website. Um, I will tell you today what I'm <coughs> heartily recommending people do because the software has become so powerful in, in all of the, uh, the reasons why we're doing this, which is actually le will lead us to this next uh, slide. Um, I actually recommend that people uh, create their entire website using uh, the WordPress software. Um, and, and you can create pages so you can have a blog as part of it, but you can also create your home page and your product pages and your contact pages actually utilizing the blogging software. Um, that, that all seems to make a lot of sense and, and definitely easier if you use the same platform. Um, does that make it easy to all make it visually the same or would you recommend your blog having a little bit different look? Well, I, I, for me, I think what they've become is they've become such an expected component uh, for a lot of people on their site uh, that, that I think that probably the right strategy is to – is the nice thing is if you use WordPress to run your whole site, you create one theme, your whole site looks the same. You can have a little bit of different look for template pages uh, as opposed to blog pages, but I think it should look the same, frankly. I, that doesn't mean it has to be identical. It, it, it is a different destination, but you certainly from a brand standpoint, it would make some sense. Okay. Um, and then one more question with kind of what you tapped on was, uh, should a blog be generic from the company voice, or should an, an individual within the company write it? Well, I, I think that the best case scenario, there are times when you have to make compromises or you have to decide what's best for the, the organization. Typically, uh, blogs have been very successful when they have communicated valuable you know, education-based content that, that, that has a, a personal kind of person behind the company uh, or face behind the company feel to it. And it's not salesy. It's not created by the PR department, run by legal, and, and then posted to the blog. I mean, I think that, that there are organizations that, that attempt to do that, uh, but I think the ones that are the most successful is, is when somebody can have a, a personal connection. And that doesn't mean you're, you're talking about what you did for dinner last night as, as a personal connection necessarily, uh, but that it's in a voice that, that, that feels very personal. Okay. Well, so let me let me transition because we I think we were right you know on this point about uh, um, why somebody would start a blog and this this to me is um, the, the number one reason and, and there's probably about three slides here that, that kind of go together before we really get into the what I call the blog primer uh, section because uh, sometimes people resist this idea of a blog because they think well I don't sit down I don't fire up my computer every morning with a cup of coffee and, and sit down and go out looking for blogs to read. Why would anybody do that? Well, the fact of the matter is they're not necessarily doing that. But what they are, what your prospects and customers uh, are doing by the millions is they are going to a search engine like Google and they're typing in uh, the questions uh, that they have, the problems they have, the things they're looking for. And they're doing that in droves. And what the search engines are doing, uh, try it yourself. Um, over 50% over of the searches uh, that are out there now are questions. How do I do this? How do I find this? Do you know anybody that's a good source of this? So go in and type in a question into a search engine. Um, and what you're going to find, typically, it probably varies by industry, but what you're going to find is six to seven of those first ten results on a search engine, say, uh, of Google is going to be content that is that is taken from a blog. In many industries, that will be the case. And so what's happening is people are reading blogs. In some cases, they don't even know it. They're visiting blogs uh, on a daily basis because that's uh, the content uh, that is actually um, leading that, or that they're finding when they go out searching. Uh, lead generation has changed dramatically uh, in the world uh, uh, small business, big business. It's not so much about broadcasting or hunting as much as it's about being found. Um, and so having this online optimized presence where you can produce lots of content that is keyword rich um, is how people are being found. Um, and that's everything from shoes to attorneys, whether you want to be found around the world or around the block. Here's um, some interesting statistics uh, that uh, 
have, have actually probably grown. Uh, this is about a year old. Uh, and I won't just read this list, but I think there's, there's some that, that uh, give tons of credence to what people are doing online. And this is uh, to the extent that they, uh, that they realize. I mean, the fact that they're joining social networks, creating blogs, putting video, uh, RSS feeds. This last one, 37, 36% think more positively about companies uh, that have blogs. Now, uh, I don't know that that necessarily means that they have a warm and fuzzy feeling just because you have a blog. What I think it suggests, however, is that the content that they are able to find and engage with and the fact that they can have a conversation with that company uh, is, is actually what's making them feel more positively. Um, I think I already cited this idea that 77% that of U.S. adults now are going online to, to find information uh, for everything that they purchase, both locally uh, and around the world. And I think that that, uh, so, so the single greatest reason sometimes that I'll suggest people have a blog is for what it can do for you when it comes to this search engine optimization. Okay. Um, I hear, I've seen that 77% of adults um, statistics a couple places. And a, a question we get a lot when we try to cite those type of things is, okay, that's great that 77% of all U.S. adults do that, but I only need to focus on my my specific uh, audience, which may, might be because they're a local store and they don't sell online. Are there recommendations about how to people can write blogs for local people? Yeah, absolutely, and that's. Uh, that, that certainly leads right into this whole idea of search engine optimization. What those people are doing, I mean, what that suggests is 77% uh, to some degree, 77% of their audience, uh, their specific niche in their town is also going online um, to, to find products and services. And so if they can't be found, if they can't find your store, even if you don't have a product to sell, if they can't find something about your store, even if it's how to get to your store, what lines you carry, just the, the very, very basic things, there is a chance um, that, that you'll never make it to the short list, <laughs> that you'll never get on their radar um, as far as, as what you might have. And, and certainly um, it, it makes it very difficult for maybe their friends to talk about your store and to be able to, to recommend where you are. So the, the simple way that the three elements that I talk about when, in terms of, of winning in the search engine game, in other words, having your local store come up when somebody puts in cool shoes in Kansas City as, as into the search engine, which is, if you're a shoe store, that, that's what they're doing, um, is to focus on writing education-based content. So in other words, if you're that shoe store, writing content or having content and, and this is why I push blogs so much because it makes it, once they're set up, it's so dead simple to do. But having content that's focused on talking about this year's colors, this year's type of shoes, how shoes are made, the, the quality of shoes, the, the trends in shoes, the fashion in shoes, whatever is going on uh, in your life, whatever is going on when your customers come into your, uh, to your store and, and ask about questions, whatever people are writing about on, the, on an industry national level. If you localize that um, and, and start uh, finding ways to create that, that kind of content, you will find that, that, that not only will the search engine find you, but people will find you and start connecting to how you're more than just a place where they can go and shop. Uh, obviously, the blogs make it very easy to frequently update that content, another th huge thing for the search engines. And then the other phenomenon that I think people underestimate is that blogs tend to attract links back. So other blog writers read about this great article about the trends in shoes that are coming in this season or at, at the fashion show that you attended, um, and, and other bloggers are linking back to that content. That's just a very, very common practice in, in the blog world. And, and nothing is greater for your ability to come up when people search than the fact that other high authority sites are linking back to your site. The search engines value that over anything that you might uh, say or do uh, with regard to ranking high in the searches. Okay, when I try to explain SEO and the whole trackbacks and links and how that can really benefit you, um, somebody asked me the other day, they were like, okay, so why don't I go create a bunch of social media profiles like Facebook and Twitter, I can have multiple Twitter accounts as long as I can link them to email addresses. Mm -hmm. um, and why don't I just put our blog or our website there and don't update the Twitter? Why, 
would that benefit their SEO, or would that actually well, hurt well, them? Well, actually, that can have some benefit. Now, uh, having a whole bunch of Twitter accounts probably wouldn't be the first place I would go, but creating a very feature, fully rich profile on, say, LinkedIn with links back to your site and your blog and your products, um, on Facebook, uh, participating in some of the, the communities. Business Week, for example, has a, a member community where you can actually build a profile. Those are really great things to do. Now, I wouldn't suggest that that be the only thing you do, but there's no question that that, that can, can produce some very valuable links back to your site. Those are brand optimized or optimizable assets that, that you can have a lot of information about you. But the other key to that too, why I really love that, is that's real estate you can control. And, and so when people go out and, and they Google your business name or they Google your personal name, uh, that, the, the content on social media sites is going to show up pretty high. And so the fact that you control that, you get to say good and bad about yourself on those, uh, on those properties is a very valuable thing. I, I do think you want to uh, that's, a, that's a step that I tell people to do um, frequently uh, as a way to get involved or to further uh, their reach and create some links, uh, but you, want, you certainly want to go beyond that as well. Okay. Um, somebody said that, or wrote in that they hear the phrase from marketing professionals all the time that um, content is king, um, which I believe is what you were talking about with the educational content and so forth. Yeah. Um, they want to know, is there a happy balance between a sales message on a blog, or do you need to stay all educational info all the time? Well, there, th that's a great question. And I will add that, that while content is king, it, it's content that's valuable, that people want to read, <laughs> that addresses the, the concerns they have. I mean, that's, you know, when people talk about content, that's the kind of content we're talking about. And I think that one of the things that happens, you know, is that over time, if you produce good quality content that helps people get the answers they want, that, that is insightful, that is entertaining, uh, that, that is stuff, stuff they want to read, uh, what you do is you build up, uh, I like to call it your, your bank account, you build, up a, you build up a trust account with those readers. And what that allows you to do is to then occasionally come around and say, hey, we've got the new spring line in this week. You should come on down and check it out. Now, if that's all you put out, um, you won't build up any trust. You won't build up any value. Value People don't want to be pitched to all the time. Uh, but once you establish um, some trust with your readership and, and that they are able to find uh, useful things that you're that you're literally giving them information without any uh, exchange of money for it. Uh, then I think that you build up the ability uh, to then uh, be a little more promotional. Okay. So let's uh, we're going to quick hopefully move through this pretty quickly because I think uh, the, the the primer the basics um, of a blog, and then we're going to move into best practices, and then kind of what I like to call amplification ways for you to get more out of the fact that you're, you're, you're out there and you're doing it now. So hopefully a lot of folks on here um, are at least familiar with the basics of a, of a blog. Uh, it is software. Um, I use WordPress.org. It is free. It is open source, which means that, that there's a whole community out there that, that can design both the themes um, and the add-ons and plugins that make it even more useful uh, for your business. And we'll talk a little more uh, in depth about that. But essentially, the steps in, in you being a blogger, for you to, to download this software and configure it, you have to have it hosted on a site, uh, and it can be on you know, duct tape marketing, it can be on your domain. Uh, then there is a theme aspect to it. So that's the actual design. And there's some wonderful, very powerful themes that, again, uh, for $100 or $200, you, you can have an entire site, certainly have an entire blog uh, designed and up and, and powerfully functioning. Uh, then there is the act of actually posting, and, and that's simply the act of writing uh, your content. And, and each post creates a new blog page. And most of you have been probably seen a blog that's the You've got kind of the journal entries date by date. Um, that's actually a post. And then there is the functionality of somebody who reads the post being able to, uh, to comment and join the conversation. Uh, there is uh, also another component of a blog software something called an RSS feed. Uh, you don't need to know what that really means. It's just plumbing, but it makes it easy for you to republish that content in other places, for people to subscribe to that content, for the search engines to actually uh, be able to find new content when you write it. So a very, very powerful part that's built right into uh, the blogging software. Um, with the so, RSS feed, I know that yeah. there are a couple things that you can do with that besides it being just something that's necessary. 
what, what do you recommend? Should people be sending out emails with their RSS feed or linking other places? Well, you, there's a couple things that I would suggest people do. You certainly want to make, and I think this is what you were asking. You certainly want to make it very easy. The, 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 there's still a lot of, you know, a lot of people that are on the more technical side. You talk about uh, having an RSS feed. They're like, oh, sure, yeah, I know what that is. You have a lot of people that still have no idea what that is. So you want to make it very obvious that that people can subscribe to your blog in a ver in various ways. Uh, you you certainly want to start putting that in. I'll show you a screen of, of how you can do that on your blog, but you also want to start putting that, as you suggested, in your, uh, perhaps in your emails, uh, that, that there's a way for them to subscribe to your content and to have that uh, come to your content or come to their email inbox if they want. You can also use RSS feeds to republish your content in other places. So it's a really common practice um, to, to actually publish an RSS feed, and I do it in several places on my website or publish your blog, and then they take that RSS feed, and then I maybe run on, on several pages just little snippets of my last three blog posts. Um, and it's the RSS feed that allows me to, uh, to do that. I actually run my RSS feed into my Facebook fan page. I run my RSS feed into my LinkedIn uh, profile, and so that those places are actually being updated with my content um, each time I write a new blog post. So I think, that's, I think that's what you were addressing. Yeah, exactly. I just think that being able to do that helps save everyone so much time, and it also keeps your, your Facebook fan page and LinkedIn pages, for example, so fresh. Yeah, and I, I, I certainly don't want people to think you set all that stuff up and then it just publishes out to all those places. One, you do it once. I, I do think it's essential that you get those set up so that you've got some things automated, but you also want to participate there and you want to engage. That, that, that's, to me, the foundational steps, but you also need to, uh, to get the most out of some of those other places, those other outposts. You also need to do some things uh, specifically engaging the community there as well. Okay. Um, I do have a question that keeps coming in, and we might have – uh, touched on it a little bit uh, ago, but I wanted to address it real fast just because there have been so many. Um, it's basically the question of how often should we blog? Sure. Yeah, and and we probably I probably would have gotten to that in best practices, but uh, but that's a that's a tough question. I mean, I I write a blog post every day. I read some blogs that update five or six times a day, and sometimes that frightens people off. They're like, I barely think I can get one a week. Um, I I think that you need to look at it as something that becomes a habit. It's something that you invest some time in, you may not feel the return until you get some momentum, until you start getting some search engine results. Uh, but the, I, I usually uh, try to push small businesses into about three times a week. I think that's enough. Uh, I mean, there are some people that love doing it, so it's not really a problem. But I think that's enough for you to get some momentum, for you to make it a habit, um, and then for you to produce a body of work over time uh, that's going to draw search engine traffic, that's going to make people interested in coming back. Um, and and I'll let people off the hook. It, 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 we're not talking about a 1,200-word, you know, shared, stare at a blank screen and try to come up with 1,200 words. A, a great blog post can just be simply answering a question that, that a, a customer or a prospect asked you that day. It can be an observation about something you read or saw. It, it can be pointing out a, a link to another great site. Uh, you know, we're going back to my shoe store. You know, it can just be pointing out, hey, here are the, the new fashions that are coming in from XYZ Designer. So it, it doesn't have to be this book length or article length kind of stuff. I mean, it, uh, get in the habit of doing it um, and, and make it easy on yourself and, and just, you know, think in terms of doing a couple quick ones. And then if you, what, what typically happens is then, then you have have something that, that really strikes you that you want to write about. You may occasionally then write a longer one. I, that first uh, example that you, you said where it just could be a question that somebody came in and asked you that day, I absolutely love that one. I've seen that a couple places. I believe the last one I saw was with like a pharmacy. They even took a picture of the customer that had asked that question and posted that on their blog, and I just thought that was amazing. Well, and I guarantee you that customer is pointing that uh, blog post out to his and her uh, friends. <laughs> yeah. Embarrassed or, or promoting yeah. it. <laughs> so, no, that's great. And the, and the good thing about that is everybody gets those. You know, I mean, if you're out there talking to customers at all, uh, there's your source of content. So we left off here. We have this is just simple. I just want to show this is the posting screen uh, behind the scenes. So once you set the software up, I mean this is you know pretty familiar looking and not too scary probably. So if I fill this out, uh, I can add images to it. I can do links. I can do colors. I can do all the stuff you might do formatting wise. And once I hit submit, uh, then that goes to the website. That that's fresh up on the home page of the blog. So 
once it's set up, pretty darn easy uh, to operate. Uh, I talked about themes. There, uh, there are a couple types of themes uh, that can make your design really come to life, um, the, the look and feel of your site. There are free themes out there. What I recommend that people do is they look at what are called premium themes. These are still $79, $199, uh, but what they are is they are, they are done by, by very, very talented designers, and they are very flexible usually. So you can get a theme that, that might allow you, or maybe you hire somebody to, and, and pay them $100 to do it for you, but that would allow you to, to have you know, thousands of different configurations so you're not, your, your theme or your blog is not uh, looking like everyone else's. So a lot of customization, but, you, but the theme works. It's, it's very powerful. It's very standard compliant uh, with WordPress. So I would heartily recommend that, that you either do some searching or there actually is a directory called WordPressPremium.com that, that, that lists most of the, uh, uh, the, the popular premium designs. So that's definitely uh, from a theme standpoint uh, where I would go. And, and there's lots of talented WordPress designers who can actually even further customize those for you. I talked about the, the RSS feed. Another basic is that you want to promote that RSS feed. I actually use, if you see the little red arrow there on the right, I actually use a, a tool called Add to Any. So if somebody comes to my page and they want to subscribe, they just hover over that and this, this button drops down. It allows them to subscribe either by email or any of the, uh, the standard kind of RSS readers. Now, one of the things you, th that's a concept I find people um, struggle over a little bit is that uh, the RSS feed um, it actually has its own address. It has its own URL. Uh, and so it's important to understand the difference between those two. So in my case, ducttapemarketing.com forward slash blog is where you would go and view the, the, the page like you see it here uh, in your browser. But that uh, ducttapemarketing.com blog forward slash feed is the actual address for the RSS feed. So if somebody wanted to subscribe to my blog uh, or I wanted to submit my blog to an RSS directory, uh, that's the URL I would use. And one of the things you'll see at the top of the screen there that I would heartily recommend uh, people check out, uh, Master Robin Good, uh, masternewmedia.org, a tremendous site on new media things, uh, created about three years ago uh, the, the top 55 RSS directories. So these are kind of like little search engines, but for, for blogging and, um, and RSS content. Um, it's up to about 250 now, but I would recommend that you, if you're not familiar with that site, that you visit it. And one of the ways that, that you really can start increasing li some links back to your site is to make sure that, that you submit your RSS feed to at least a couple dozen of the sites that are on that. And there are some industry-specific ones that might make more sense than, than some others. So. Let's move now. That was kind of the quick, hopefully I didn't bore too many people with that that already knew what blogs were. Let's talk about some best practices. I will tell you that I think one of the first things that you should do, and this is even if you have a blog set up, but certainly if you don't have one and you're considering, is you should read some blogs. You should follow people that blog. Listen to what's going on in your industry. And there's some great uh, easy tools to do that with before you ever really jump in. And I think what it will do is it will show you some examples of of how people do it. I think you'll pick up some content tips and style tips uh, by doing so. You might actually find uh, some folks that some of these blogs that you read and subscribe to, if you start maybe making comments on some of those blogs, you might actually start finding that, that, that you're, you're networking with some folks that can later be an asset uh, for, for your blog and linking back to your blog. Um, utilizing a, tool, a free tool like Google Reader or Blog Lines, you can find blogs that are in your industry that, that seem to be relevant content for you that you might want to learn from, but also that you might want to, they might be your competitor. You want to see what they're doing. Very, it makes it very easy to subscribe to these um, and to uh, for you to. Um, uh, you know, update, you go to one page, and you're able to see all the new content from all these, so you're not jumping around. I subscribe to probably 50 blogs, and in about 10 minutes I can, I can scroll through all of the content uh, and drill down into what I want to read or, or not. Um, write what people search. Uh, that's another thing that I think sometimes uh, people, uh, you know, I've made, hopefully made the point that uh, search engine optimization and the, the ability to draw leads because people are out there searching uh, is one of the best uh, advantages of blogging. Uh, but it's important that you 
are writing you, that you understand what if people in your industry are searching for, uh, the, the act, actual phrases and keywords, uh, and that you keep those kind of at the top of your mind so that, that if you're trying to attract people in your community for, you know, I'm going to go back to my shoe store, for a certain style of shoe, a certain designer, uh, that, and that that's what people are looking for uh, when they go online and search locally. And, and I'll tell you, one of, the, one of the tricks I use for a lot of people is ask your customers. You know, what, when you when you found us or when you were searching for us, what did you actually type into Google to find us? Um, and and that can be a great way to to understand. Certainly, looking using a tool like Google Analytics um, will actually give you the the phrases that people typed in when they uh, when they visited before they visited and came and found you. Um, but but to to start writing. Uh, and using those terms in the titles and in your blog posts. Uh, can And just consciously maybe keep a notebook of all the key phrases and, and go back and say, well, you know, I haven't written about X for a long time. Uh, you know, we already talk, I talked about feed the spiders often. I'm talking about the search engine spiders three to five times a week. I think uh, what it does is it is it there is there's something to the fact that you're frequently updating and they're being pinged that makes them pay more attention uh, as opposed to writing once a month. I'm going to talk about a little bit about how to get more comments, but you really want to engage your what I call your comment community. One of the values of a blog is that people can make comments, they can participate, and so there are some great ways to stimulate that because I, I do believe that there's a couple practical reasons. I think that it helps you build a community. I know as a blogger when I was first starting uh, and somebody would comment, it made me so excited to go back out and write again. You know, it's like, hey, somebody must be listening to this. So the more you can kind of stimulate that, I think, is, is a great way for it to make it more valuable for you and your readers. Uh, and then lastly, uh, just because you write it, you know, what's the if, if you write it, they will come. Uh, just because you write it uh, is not enough. You need to spend some time promoting it and building uh, an audience. And, and by doing so, it's not just because you want all these readers who think you're just a brilliant writer. By doing so, by amplifying your message, you are going to start to get not only readers, but you're going to get other people to start noticing, to linking back to your site. You might actually draw the uh, attention of, of a journalist that's important in your industry. So uh, it's certainly important that you promote uh, your activity while you're blogging. So two questions on, on this one. Um, a lot of times we get people who say they're scared of comments because uh, they, yeah. they're afraid that the people that have negative feedback are more vocal than the people that have positive feedback. Yeah, that's an unfortunate truth, actually. <laughs> and, well, a couple things on that. You, you have the soft blogging software, first off, you know, rest at ease, gives you ultimate control. You can not have comments. You can modify them. You can, uh, you can moderate them. So, I mean, you don't have to. The, the, there's nothing that says you have to post you know, some comment from somebody who is being unreasonable anywhere. Um, however, uh, there's a couple things I would say about that. First off, if they really are negative, if they've really had a bad experience, or, or if there's something going on that makes somebody want to be vocal, just because you're not allowing them to make comments uh, doesn't mean they can't make it elsewhere. Uh, one of the things that social media has certainly done is made it very easy for people to express their opinions in, online in, in many, many ways. So uh, if, if First off, I don't think many people with a typical small business are, are actually going to go and express uh, really negative things. But one of the pieces of advice I like to give people is, wouldn't you rather host that on your site to where you can address it maybe uh, there or have, a, have a, a way maybe to even rectify <laughs> the situation that, that was negative to actually have your community see how you respond to that. I, I, again, I, I think it can be touchy, uh, but my personal belief is that, that actually having the conversation uh, within your own four walls gives you a lot more control uh, than just not letting people comment because there are plenty of places they can do it anyway. Okay. Uh, a second question to that slide that was up before um, we had two people ask was, how do you recommend amplifying your message? And the second question kind of alluded to when amplifying your message, how do you, if you're doing it through like advertising or something like that, how do you make it um, pay off? for how much money okay. you put into it? Well, um, I, do, I, I do. I am going to go over a couple of those. Okay. Um, so if, if uh, I actually have a whole slide where I'll give you kind of uh, all my suggestions on, on some, some ways to amplify your message. So Perfect. Can, can we hold off on that? Let's do it. All right. 
So uh, I want to finish on this uh, engaging your comment community. Um, th these are a couple practices that I have done for, for years. I see other people doing them, and they do work. Um, the one is to ask for comments. In other words, write a post and say, this is what I've found. Uh, what do you guys think? Um, and you'll find that, that, that just that act of asking uh, sometimes. So asking questions. I've been looking to do blah, blah, blah. Has anyone else done that? Uh, getting people's opinions, commenting on uh, certainly when somebody makes a comment, um, and and you know this is a practice that that you know I probably don't do as well as I should. Um, actually commenting on their comment um, if it's appropriate, uh, showing the fact. I mean, being a little human, you know, you don't have to be stiff. I mean, showing your uh, your your true story and you and and talking sometimes about what's going on in your life can be a, another way to to actually get um, some some comments. Talking about something, I don't. You don't have to be terribly controversial, but but having a strong opinion, stirring the pot a little bit, sometimes can can engage folks. Um, there are a couple plugins that we'll talk about, uh, but there's there's one that actually uh, is a comment plugin uh, called Comment Relish uh, that that actually uh, will uh, rank folks. So if people comment on your blog a lot, they'll show up as your top commenter. In fact, that's uh, the name of another plugin uh, from WordPress called uh, Top Commenter, uh, or Commentator, I'm sorry, Top Commentator. Um, and that will, will allow you to kind of display, here are the five people that this month made the most comments. Sometimes that can encourage people to make comments. Um, and certainly making it easy. I mean, don't bury it. Make it quite obvious how somebody in, in, uh, would comment, and maybe even having a static place that, that invites them to, or maybe even teaches them how. I know there are, in some industries, the, uh, the whole idea of commenting and subscribing is, is not that uh, well known to people. So maybe even having a, uh, a post or a page that, that tells them all the ways that they can uh, participate on your blog uh, could make some sense. So, so kind of setting some of these up and then occasionally practicing you know these uh, tactics as you blog is another way for you to, or it's one way certainly for you to to engage your comment community. So I mentioned some of the plugins. Uh, these are my favorites. There are thousands. If you search for just about anything you want to do, uh, there probably is somebody that's written uh, a plugin. But I think that these are some ways to really enhance the the software itself. is is very very powerful. Uh, but these are some ways to enhance it. I already talked about the add to any, and, and if you just search for any of these names that I have on here, you're going to find the uh, the plugin. Um, and it's very simple in most cases to to get these configured and added to your site. It's all it's very very well explained usually. Add to any is just a great easy way for people to subscribe. Um, there, there is a commenting, just standard commenting system uh, that is built into WordPress. Um, I've chosen to use a, a service, a free service called Discuss, uh, because I think it, it gives a, the commenter a richer experience. It pulls in the uh, the Twitter reactions, for example, to uh, to what I've pub, uh, published, and so it just really gives a much more complete picture about the people that are commenting. It allows you to actually drill down and look at other places they've commented, uh, which for me is a great way to find some some other sites. Uh, Twitter Tools is one uh, plugin that people use, and it allows you to actually post your your last tweet, or I'm sorry, your last blog post to your Twitter stream if you choose, and automatically does it. Uh, Google Sitemaps Generator is a tool that that produces um, basically activity that's sent off to uh, it. It says Google, but it's all the search engines now use what's called an XML sitemap. It automatically generates uh, an updated and, and pings the search engines every time you uh, update your post or your blog. I'm sorry. Uh, Akismet is an anti-spam. Uh, unfortunately, one of the bad things is blogs became very popular. The spammers decided that making spam comments and using robots to do so uh, uh, was a good practice, and so that's a tool that, that cuts down that. That's actually built right in, ships with uh, WordPress now. Another one I love is called Related Entries. And what this does is when you make a blog post, it searches through all of your blog posts and says, well, here are four that are kind of related to that. And so then it has links at the bottom, automatically posts links at the bottom of your, of your current blog post to, uh, to some other posts throughout your site. Uh, that is just such a great way. I can't tell you how many times I, I've you know, I've got posts that I've written two, three, and four years ago that will get a whole bunch of activity again uh, because they showed up on my current post that, that became popular. 
Uh, the last one is something that's called All-in-One SEO. And this just, as I stated before, WordPress right out of the box is, is very search engine friendly, just the way it's all set up. Uh, this just gives you a couple extra set of tools, uh, particularly in working on some meta tags for each post. And so instead of uh, some things being a little generic, uh, you get uh, tons of, of uh, add-ons and, and places where you can, can add some SEO content or content that the search engines use, you know, post by post basis. But all of them once they're set up, very, very easy to use. So <coughs> excuse me, the um in terms of of amplifying, so now I'm gonna the, the person that uh, that has asked that question uh, hopefully will uh, address that. Uh, first way is to certainly make sure that you're integrating uh, the the fact that you have a blog, the blog URL uh, into you know it's like the old days when we were telling people to put their their website on their business card. Well, the, the same is certainly true of of blog activity. Um, a couple other things that you can do. Uh, I know people that will take let's say in a week you write three or four blog posts. Uh, that I know folks that will send that out as, uh, or maybe over a two-week period, they'll collect four or five blog posts, and they'll actually just send out kind of a, a digest of their, you know, maybe just a hundred or two hundred words of each blog post, and just kind of here's, you know, here's what we talked about this week. Uh, and one of the things it does is, is in many cases, maybe you've already got a, an email newsletter list, or maybe you've got folks that have come into your store that that you're capturing their emails, but you're not uh, they're, they're, you're not capturing them as subscribers, or they're not frequent readers. It's a great way to send traffic back to your blog and point out uh, the various content in in a real compact form. I, I know people that that really uh, have a lot of success with that. Uh, you want to make sure that that while um, it's great to have all these RSS reader ways to subscribe. There are a lot of folks that just want to get their, their blog or anything really <laughs> by way of email. They don't know what an RSS reader is. Uh, so using a, a service like FeedBlitz, um, you, you can actually have an email subscription box uh, that would feed. I would suggest, Jenna, maybe you can tell me different, would probably feed right uh, or at least eventually re add right into your vertical response list. The RSS? Social media profile. Oh, with that? Sorry, the, the, the subscribe to the blog, right? Yeah. Yep. So the social media profiles are another great way. If you're out there on a Facebook or on Twitter, make sure that you have your blog uh, linked uh, in those profiles. Here's a great tool that I would tell anybody who uh, who's listening: if you go out and do this, this will change your business dramatically. Uh, if you have strategic partners, if you have folks that you that, that maybe refer business that that you work together in some cases, uh, build a blog together. That, that's not promoting any one of your businesses, but maybe promoting a whole industry. I, I've, I've seen like home service providers, like a you know a, a, a roofer and a plumber and an air conditioning person, get together and they write just about home repair, um, and that that blog. Uh, over time will just absolutely dominate in the search engines in their local community. Uh, but it also is just a great asset to build, and, and obviously it promotes all the individual businesses. They maybe only have to blog once or twice a week uh, to, to keep it active, but uh, creating a, a strategic blog network is a tremendous way for you to, to amplify your, your message on your own ind individual sites. Uh, guest posting is another great way. Find blogs that you like to read that, that have you know, obviously, it's nice if you can find ones that have huge readership, <laughs> but in some cases, uh, uh, the, those are pretty competitive. Uh, but but suggest to the blog owner if you, you know send them a sample of of your blog, uh, the type of stuff you write about, and and post occasionally to other sites. That can be a great way for you for people to then find your content. Um, Sending out surveys. Uh, I know that Vertical Response has a great tool for sending out uh, surveys. That can be a great way for you to, to amplify your your blog and your uh, your primary web presence uh, because it's a great way for you to get content ideas uh, that you might actually want to write about. Um, and then certainly, uh, I mentioned already, um, I, I wouldn't use this as your exclusive uh, tactic, but publishing your content, your blog content, Letting your Twitter followers know about it, uh, pub, pub, changing it on your status at LinkedIn and Facebook, uh, or just or running the RSS feeds there, uh, as we mentioned already, uh, can be a great way to to also some uh, additional ways to also amplify to those audiences that uh, that spend a great deal of their time there. I, I know that. There are folks that read my blog uh, through Facebook, and uh, there are folks that uh, that 
prefer to communicate through Twitter and LinkedIn. And so uh, I, I catch them uh, by being able to, to let them know that there's something new where I, I may not catch them any other way. I had a very interesting comment of somebody that wrote in that said they actually get more comments on their Facebook fan page about their blog than they do on their actual blog. Yeah. Um, do you have any recommendations on how they could get some of those people over to their actual blog site so it would look <laughs> like they had more comments on the, on their yeah. actual blog? You know, that uh, that may not be essential. I mean, I think the, the, the real point is the engagement. I mean, and, and that doesn't surprise me. I, I sometimes... Uh, um, and in fact, I, I do republish my Twitter to Facebook, and, it, and I will sometimes get a, a greater uh, response out of uh, Facebook folks uh, than Twitter. And, I, and it just, you never know why. It just seems like a certain topic sometimes. Um, but I, I, again, I, I think that the, the hopefully what this uh, uh, person that's commenting uh, is doing is that, that they're then jumping over to Facebook and they're engaging uh, that community there. And, and they may want to even, hopefully we're talking about on, they may be talking about on their personal profile wall, uh, but hopefully that person also has a, uh, um, a fan page, a business page, and, uh, and is maybe adding, uh, experimenting with adding some, some unique content there as well. Um, I had one story I wanted to add just because I, I get a lot of questions that were about the strategic network. We have a lot of our customers that say, oh, we don't have a strategic network. Like we're just a tiny mom and pop shop that we don't have a lot of partners and things like that. I saw a vertical response customer send out an email um, just to their customer base saying, hey, please respond to this email with some of your customer stories and we want to feature you on our blog. And they had a great response of their own customers. They used their customers as their strategic network and reposted that stuff. I just thought that was a great idea. Well, that's a tremendous. I'll, I'll give you another um, way to, to amplify that as well. Um, you can utilize your customers to help you create a strategic network. Uh, if you're uh, an attorney, uh, go to your customers and say, who do you use for accounting? You know, who's your bank? I mean, who's, what's the best of class you know, in everything that you buy? Um, and what, what typically will happen is you're going to find three or four or five names that keep cropping up over and again. And those are the folks that you ought to then target to, to, uh, with this idea of creating this strategic network. Great. So we're down to um, a couple sample blogs that I wanted to point out. And some of these, uh, anybody on here will probably recognize. It's more um, what I want to point out is what I think is important about these particular blogs. Uh, this is a blogger, actually, uh, who is going to be on this series, I understand, uh, later uh, in, in the series. Uh, Chris Brogan writes uh, just under his own name, chrisbrogan.com. And one of the things that I think you'll find here is this is, uh, this is a great example. You know what? Sorry to interrupt, but um, it looks like either GoTo might be slow, or are we, are we on the right um, slide? Well, I have a sample blog up here, but it's not showing, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> so are you on Integrate oh, Amplify still? Now I'm on sample blogs. It looks like it caught up. It looks like GoTo was just a little slow. But now I'm okay. back. Yeah, oh. yeah now we're, yeah, I, we're caught up. Okay, <laughs> all right. So this is a screenshot of chrisbrogan.com, uh, and, and he has been rewarded for this practice. He writes frequently. He writes thoughtfully. He uh, is very passionate. He obviously he is in the business of, of social media. That's what he does as a social media consultant. But when I read his stuff, I, it is always so well thought out. I mean, it is not uh, something that he spends a lot of time doing. He can afford to. It's his business. But I think this is an example of somebody that, that just really takes a very – personal and, and passionate, you know, kind of craft about what he writes, and, and uh, he consequently is, he's very well followed. Uh, but that's an example, I think, of, of somebody that, that if you want to think in terms of, you know, how if, if, I mean, he loves to write, and if you, there are people out there that enjoy writing, and this is a great, uh, I think, a great example. <clears throat> Next one is um, a woman who is a kind of an executive coach. Um, and has written a great book called Escape from Cubicle Nation. Her name is Pam Slim. And this uh, is an example. One of the things I, I think that people really enjoy about uh, Pam is she writes very personal stuff. So she certainly gives advice and talks about a lot of her, uh, her posts are about people leaving the corporate world 
and starting their own business. But it's also very common for her to talk about something that she's uh, she has a um, fairly young child, so something talk about something she's done with her young child. And I think her her audience, you can just tell from the comments that are on there, they they really connect with her as a person, and that's a lot. That's a big part of of her brand. Um, so I think that's a great example of that type of of personal style of writing. Next one I have up here, and again I think. I, uh, I've gone down your list, Jenna, of people that are going to be on yours, but this is a Tita <laughs> Camp uh, blog called Small Business Trends. And what I like about this one is um, – Anita has, over the last couple of years, really uh, put together um, some very, very talented writers who actually contribute. So this is a great example of, of this is almost a blog as a magazine. So instead of this being one person's voice, uh, this is this is like a, a Anita almost cer certainly Anita writes uh, as well, but she also acts almost like an editor um, and has really rounded up um, eight or ten folks that write uh, very consistently for her, and it is. Uh, is really really turned into a, a great. This is this is kind of the blog as publication. I think this is the. I don't want to say the magazine of the future because I think we're kind of here already. But uh, uh, but I think this is a great example of what can be done, uh, almost a little bit like the strategic network, where you you have many contributors and and together um, much stronger than say one person. <clears throat> And the last one I want to end with is um, is a great example of getting your users or your readers or your customers uh, involved. This is actually um, Carhartt, which is a pretty popular, well-known brand of work clothing uh, that's been out there for 100 years. Um, and actually, um, full disclosure, this is a, a compendium software project. This is not a WordPress blog. Uh, but this is uh, what they've done is they've created a site called My Tough Job, and they frequently get contributions from their customers who basically are saying, you know, you think your job's hard. <laughs> here's, here's what I have to do um, and, and telling stories. And it is a very, very well-read blog, and it's actually just managed. To, they, they have set it up and so that it's, uh, they, can, they can give a, uh, their customers a posting screen. I mean, so it's it's they literally type it in and um, they upload an image, and then they do have a moderator that that uh, obviously makes sure it's all all goes well. Uh, and that but they publish it. It's become a very very popular part of of their company's site uh, to have you know real customers telling their stories. And I I think anyone could take this this similar uh, approach, even if it's. You know, video testimonials, audio testimonials, however you want to do it. Uh, I think this kind of, of uh, the, the tools are, are, are there, and you will find a, a percentage of your customer base, in, in many cases at least I find, uh, love to be asked to do something like this. So that's really uh, that's it as far as the samples I wanted to show. If, uh, here's my little pitch for if you want to connect with me um, socially, there are a couple options you can do it. Uh, but uh, do we are we going to take any uh, any other questions, Jenna? Um, yeah, we we just had, we had three that I think were pretty interesting and had a couple people ask. So um, we will wrap up with those, I think. Uh, one was. Is it smart for a company to have multiple blogs? Let's say they have three different products that are very different. Should each post um, about each product go in a different place? Hmm. That's a great, great question. Um, uh, and, and like a lot of uh, those great questions, I, I have to have a little bit of it depends. I could certainly see a case for where uh, having that, that focused content uh, in, a, in a blog uh, would would make sense. So in other words, having the three different blogs might make some sense. Uh, the, the question has to be if, if that gets confusing. I mean, the, the nice thing about the blogging software is, is it, you don't really have to promote it as a blog per se. I mean, it can be, here's our product. You want to find out more about product A? Go here. And so um, it, rather than maybe looking at them as, as separate blogs, I might look at them as just separate uh, um, navigation uh, portals on your site. Um, I do think that having the focus will, uh, you know, of content will probably benefit those individual blogs from a search engine standpoint uh, because it'll all be about you know that product or that that niche or that segment, whatever it is you're writing about. Um, if that feels like too much to manage, uh, one of the things that you can do is create categories in the blogging software so you could actually have one physical setup 
but then you could actually assign each post to a category. Uh, and the nice thing about that is people can actually subscribe to and sort the blog by category. So there's a couple ways that you might dice that. Okay. Um, another one that's kind of similar is they have a blog right now that their CEO writes. Um, would it take away some of the credibility if maybe some of their product managers were to write some blog posts, or is it better to have multiple bloggers? Wow, you know that's a tough one. I mean, one of the ideas behind the CEO blog is that look, this is the you know this is the you don't have to think of yourself this way, but I mean this is the big kahuna. You know, this is the boss, uh, and and this is the face you know behind, or I mean this is the voice and the face behind this company. And a lot of times, what the CEO might talk about, just like they might in a meeting, you know, would be maybe bigger picture things, industry things thought leadership that I mean that's that's at least the hope that, that that's what the CEO of an organization might write about now that doesn't the, mean they have to I mean they, there certainly are plenty of examples of CEOs talking about what they what their hobbies are <laughs> uh, that that again accomplish the idea of you feeling a connection to that company but I think that if if you're going to have a CEO blog there's probably an idea that that's going to have a certain voice um, whereas Product folks or customer service, um, you know, would probably it would probably be a good idea for that to have a different voice. Okay, um, and then the last one, just to kind of wrap up, is there's a bunch of small businesses out there that are hobbies more than businesses. Um, would it be a good idea to start a blog before the actual business comes to terms? Well, it's certainly not a bad idea. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think that if, if because it's so easy to do, it's relatively inexpensive to do. Uh, I think I would. I mean, I think there there are a number of folks that have had success doing that. And then once uh, the good news is, once they turned that hobby into a business, uh, then th there's a body of work there, and maybe even some some search engine uh, traffic and indexing that's gone on already. Uh, there, uh, one of the one semi important factor in uh, search engines uh, algorithms is the, how old the the uh, domain name is, you know, when you registered it, um, and when it went online. So, you know, if you can get a year or two head start on that, uh, I, I think that'd be a great idea. Okay. Um, well, first and foremost, I, I want to say thank you to you, John. Um, we have definitely covered a ton of information today, um, and I believe it was a great web webinar. Um, to everyone else, I know there's been lots of questions about if we're sending out the slides or recording this webinar. Um, the answer is yes to both. We will be sending up a follow-up email. You can probably look for that around Monday um, with the recorded version and a link to where you can download the slides. We will also try, I'm going to grab a couple of the most commonly asked questions and maybe sum up my notes from today about what John has taught us and publish those on the VR Marketing Lounge, um, which is something that we, one of our social media places. Um, and I will link to all of those as well in the follow-up. So with that being said, everybody, I hope you enjoy your Friday. And thanks again, John. You bet. It was great.